you very rarely get errors. Well, definitely someone to look up for, especially for maybe even a young Chinese team here, as they have still a few years to improve before the big test in Beijing. Take a look over at sheet E, the only men's game on today. China versus Canada. Canada lying short. Chinese skip, Ma Easy, easy, easy. Just looking for a nose hit. Against two yellow counters, plays it perfectly. So a score of one, for China, after one end. Really nice hit and roll there from Agnes knocking her. Another thing, Xander, we were saying, you know, it's not just the playing of the shots that makes that great team, it's also the team dynamic and the communication, the fitness side of it, everything, every part of the game. This team just buy into 100% and they're very, very good at it. Communication on the ice is constant. You can. You can look at this team and you wouldn't know if they're winning or losing. Their body language is the same. They're very professional out in the ice. And the coach for Team China, Carolyn McCrory, herself got Olympic experience. And Mike Harris, also Olympic experience. So two Canadians that are over helping with the coaching in China in this build up to their Olympic Games in Beijing in 2022. <laughs> She's looking for the roll side, but uh, she's now giving China the opportunity to get that inside roll. Experience national coach for Sweden, Pia Lindholm. She's worked with the girls for many years. Yeah. Looking very pensive this morning. I'll be overlooking most of the Swedish games, if not all. There'll be some long days in curling clubs and arenas around the world. And Sweden usually represent both uh, women's and men's and also mixed doubles. And usually do quite well. Looking for the double here. Okay. Just catches one, jams it, and rolls the shooter. Okay. Sweden lie to. Chance now to bring a third one round 
behind that guard, really put pressure on China. Sweden have got last stone advantage here. Ah, lovely draw. Look over women's game USA versus Korea. Korea lying shot in the forefoot. Corey Christensen from USA. Trying to outcount this yellow on the forefoot. She clips that one and rolls out. Oh no, she hasn't moved it out far enough. It's a steal of one for Korea. So they lead one nothing after one end. This Korean team were the finalists at the second leg of the World Cup. Lost out to Japan. Joanne Lund just slightly short there. Sweden still lie too. Yeah, it's like half the same as the last one. Yeah. 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 Vi kan lämna en trippel om vi är ovanför vår egen kantsten där. Ja. Så so still great communication the whole time. Sweepers know exactly where this is to be. Väldigt adad. Adad. Åtta tal, åtta! Okej. Var åtta! Vi har skrivit åt! Ta plats! Full åtta! Fin linje! Wow! Ser ut och glida tjejer! Lite, lite längre! Aldrig! Åtta! Den är emot! Wow! Den är emot! Just a wee bit further than they'd wanted. They wanted just to be top of the eight foot. Does give China a target now. Yeah, you can see the time clocks. Enough time for the teams to play out the second end here. And it's definitely going to be a factor later on. It's always nice to, to not having to rush. We've seen front end telling their skips how much time they have left uh, quite a lot more often this week. I feel like they're getting used to it as uh, Yilun looking for a double on the yellows here. Hi, 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 hi. And that double is hi, made hi. and that's a very good shot. Actually even rolls the shooter onto that center line, making the draw for two very tough for Sweden. Alltså, har vi, vi kom, 
Ja, jag tror också att det är match. Där är det. Där är det. Vi tror lite mindre! Vad är det nu? 20. Men bara att det har gått en sen mindre än annan som får det bra. The clock will stop at 13 seconds for Hasselborg. More than enough time. Just needs to bite the forefoot. A little tricky always to, to cross the center line. Just in terms of uh, curl and weight. Second then. Definitely haven't played this path. Big sweep to try and get there. <laughs> that is a uh, great front end brushing. Brings that onto the forefoot. And that is two points for Sweden. The game plan perfect so far. A 2 1 lead for the home favourites here in Jan Chepping. China, China, Sweden in the third end now here. Women's curling in the morning from the Curling World Cup leg three. Great stone positioning. Jean Shindy. Top of the forefoot. Followed by Sophia Marbergs. China just coming up light here. Look, Scotland versus Japan. Japan line three, two anyway. Close for third, Sophie Jackson. First win last night on a shootout. Yes! Go to go! Looking for the double. 
Takes two out the house, but leaves Japan lying one. So a steal of one for Japan. Second end. Japan lead one nothing. Real nice tap up here by Ockenhauer. Leaves that tapped up stone frozen on the red. And leaves the shooter just partially open. The perfect angle. Just bounces off. They wanted to half check that yellow. It now gives Sweden a target. Very unlucky there. They half checked that yellow. It'll be a completely different shot now for Sweden. So far, a perfect end from Sweden. And trouble for China. Look at Russia, Canada. Russia lying a, a couple in there. Darcy Robertson from Canada looking for their first win of this Curling World Cup. Do nothing down. Want this to stop right on the one foot. Is it going to stop? Fomina sweeping that through, and it's a steal of one for Russia. So Russia now leads three nothing after two ends. China having to clear things up now. Okay. Alternative ball lägger. Nu kanske vi lägger ball hög center. Kan de inte skjuta på röd? Lägg sig guard bara. Guard hög center. Ja. China have got last stone. We're going to find it hard to generate a two here. But uh, need to keep it open to try and at least get in to score one. That's a great guard on the centre line. China now face, do they run that in or do they run their own in? Because if they go for their own and don't make it, 
That centre would still be blocked. Just barely gets contact. Sweden still lies three. And now, with those red guards on either side, they've really blocked the intern and the outturn draw. So, a little worried that if they just guard the shot stone here, the second shot will be half open and China can make essentially double off of that, stick it behind the corner guard, Sweden be lying shot stone, but the red Chinese counter be pretty buried around the corner, so I think what they're going to do here is try and guard as much as they can of the second shot. And just leave the, the best play stone poking out in the hole. It'd be very tough to make a play on the shot stone and stick around. Yeah, it's kind of trying to guard a bit of both, isn't it? Be a tempter to your position, and that's exactly what she's done. That's exactly what they wanted. So as you see. That double's not there now. The shot stone is open through the port of the center line, but can you make a play on it and stick around? Very tough. Yeah, the shooter's likely to roll out into the open. Come through there at weight. I think you might have to play it though. If anything, you, you kill the shot stone here, you open up the forefoot. It's tougher for Sweden to replace it anyway. Tickles the top one, catches the back one. Okay. A bit unlucky, but at the same time, that does open up the forfeit. <laughs> Making uh, this call pretty swiftly. Still got 40 seconds, it's not. Not time to panic yet. Well, she knew what she, what she wanted to do, so just making the call quick so she can take her time in the hack, I think. I'd much rather go through your piece shot routine without having to think about the time at all. Definitely where you don't want to shave off time is in your slide. Not kicking out too fast, especially on a draw. So I'm looking pretty good here. Yeah, I want to be top T, give nothing for China to freeze. A oh, great shot. Can China come through that gap? On the intern. 
accreditate. Känslan känns jävligt ärlig dock. Jag bara så här kickade. Känslan kickade jag kanske. Det där känns som kanske en bak, fyra bak. Coaching team are looking quite worried there. Caroline and Mike in the background. You know, so far China's had quite a few problems with the Swedish side. Jang Yilun had to make a great draw in the first end, facing three. Gave up two in the second, now facing three again. Needing to come past the guard here. Oh, hit and roll. This is curling, though. And is it curling too much? Yes, it is. And will they spin in another yellow? No, but close. Still a huge steal of three for Sweden. Weren't on that early enough, the sweepers. As it crashes the guard, it's a 5-1 lead for Sweden through three ends of play. Five won the scoreboard as China plays Sweden in the Curling World Cup and eight end competition this morning. So last end before half time, China would so like to put a couple of points up on the board before uh, facing their coaches, Rona. Yeah, definitely want to get a couple back here. They were really chasing that last end. They didn't get the opportunity to build anything. And it's all about stone positioning. See, this Swedish team are so strong. And the stone positioning is critical against them. And there you see Sofia Maberg's 83% for the tournament. Great setup player for Team Sweden. D is having a good tournament as well. Pretty similar numbers to all position. Play two good corner guards. So the leads have done their bit at this end. And this is the big change now this season with the five rock rule last year. No doubt that uh, Sweden would peel one of the corner guards and keep it open. But you're not allowed to do that anymore. No. Not with, the, not with this rock anyway. They're going to have to wait one more. So the call becomes, well, bring all the stones into the house. Throw a center guard here. 
You've seen some teams even draw half around one of the corners to try and take away the draw. Maybe even try and tick the corners, which is very tough to do. Usually we see this uh, set up top four, top eight or top 12, and then a center guard. Just leaving a lot of rocks for your opponent to, to deal with before utilizing those corners. Yeah, but it changes the skill set for the second players as well. They're used to playing and practicing big peel weights, whereas they need to practice these guards and the either tick shots now. So it is a different way of playing the game. China just trying to hit and roll behind their corner, but rolls out into the open. Still, still a pretty good shot. It takes away that uh, Yellowstone top of the house where you know, Sweden's controlling that forfeit. Leaves the counter in the rings. So China just slowly trying to open up that center line, giving them some room. Now the corner guard peel for knocking her. This is where some teams might keep playing the offense. They could get sucked in. They're so thinking, involved. It's so We're lying quite well. Yeah. Let's just bring another one in. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, oh why yeah. didn't we peel? You look at it, you might see, well, we're, we're lying too. We got one buried around the center. Let's just put one more in there. And then you're invested. And that's why we see threes and fours pop on the board. So Sweden just peels the corner, one of them. Tries to keep this a little more open. And a mistake from China now. So look over China versus Canada. Canada line three. It's one all in this third end. Mashua, skip for China. Facing three. Sweepers managing this. Look pretty happy with it. Only need to touch the forefoot. Ah, uh, it perfectly well judged. China score one, two, one after three. I can see even. With that mistake from China, crashing on the center guard, they do have a setup here for a couple of points. You might think, well, Sweden's line three. But quite a few rocks to play. There's a double corner guard. Yeah. That five up rule certainly giving the advantage back to the team with last stone. Ideally, just looking to tap this yellow just behind the T-line. Uh, just a bit too much and rolls off into the open. Hey. Strong Second numbers from Sarah McManus. For a third player, that's pretty strong for the whole tournament. China just need that one really good shot. Try and get something generated behind their corner guards. Well, they're slowly building something. That tap the previous shot has left them backing behind the corner. So if they can make this double and roll buried, that rock on the left could have been very beneficial, but 
just over curls will sit right there. Hasselberg, 77% for the tournament so far. Super's trying to hold this. Bang on the nose. Sweden lie for. Men jag trodde att det skulle gå om en rak eller här. Ja, jag tror att den bara för att den började komma mot Lina. Det är bra spel. Jag gillade verkligen när du säger förstod inte riktigt varför. Eller? Nej, jag, tror, jag tänkte bara, det mm, kan vara lite tajt. Alltså om man tänker ja. på, för med dig hade vi nästan lite annat än den här. Wow, Ange Lund, 76 for the tournament, so very similar to Anna Hasselberg. Trying to get the roll inside here. And they've underswept that. Just rolled a fraction too far. Not enough to make Sweden think about what they want to do here. But roll buried the run back to the only call. Now half open, it's, well, what's easier? Just clip it directly or play the run back. I think the choice is to just try and hit what they can see here. See her pre-shot pre routine here, cleaning the slider, cleaning the rock. Yep, so important that the player goes through the same pre-shot routine time and time again. Second to compose herself in the hack, vis visualize the shot, Second. and then we're off. Just needs a tiny chunk of the red here, no problems. Peels that out, lies three again. A third time for Jang Yilin having to draw against three Swedish counters in this game. Sweden are just very clinical today. This draw is slightly easier than it was at the last end. Not too much cover out front to navigate your way around. Just needs to draw the forefoot. Certainly needs this one to stay within reach. Big sweep early. Still some life in the stone yet. Can you keep it up? Can you bring it in? I'm gonna have to work this very hard. It's starting to bend. Is that yellow stone on the top becoming a problem? It does chip off it, but just rolls in for one. Great sweep by the Chinese front end to save that draw. One point for China. Still in this one, but they will trail Sweden by three. It's a 5-2 lead as we head into halftime. Teams will have a break and be back soon.
first end and uh, Sweden line three, all in the line. Jangy Loon needs to bite the one foot. And just hangs on for shot. <laughs> Second end and Anna Hasselberg line one. Draw for two. Sweeper swept it really well the whole way. And bites the forefoot. Score of two. Third end. Again, China facing three Swedish counters. Yang Lun trying to play a tap back. Sweepers can't hold it, catches the guard. And it's a steal of three for Sweden. Looking across the other scores, Japan 2-1 up over Scotland, Canada 4-0 down against Russia, Korea 3-1 up over US, and the only men's game, China 2-1 up against Canada. Earlier, yes. <laughs> just, uh, just missing it. Just gonna call before. Yeah. 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 That one, yeah. You needed to be on it right away. This one a little bit slower. Because it. Well, looking at the stats, it is so clear Sweden's having a top, top game this morning. Haven't made, I mean, hardly any mistakes and total accuracy is 95% playing China 66. And it's not that China's haven't, haven't played that badly. It's just they're having a very tough time against a very tough Swedish side this morning. So it'll be tough to, to pull back, but four ends to go, five rock rule. And a shootout, if they could tie it up, still a chance. As we saw Hasselberg receiving a back rub from her vice skip. Was your vice ever that nice? No, I think there was something <laughs> wrong there. Oh, very good having your team massage you at half time. Well, they seem to work pretty well together. So Olympic champions, and of course, they'll be looking to win every championship they can. Starting with uh, this one, the Curling World Cup. China, Sweden are back on the ice here. It's the leg three of the Curling World Cup. We're in Yuan Chöping, Sweden, and the Swedes are feeling very much at home. Playing absolutely superb this morning. It would be very impressive if they can keep it going for another four ends. Hardly made a mistake, and now a tough shot to start the second half for Sofia Mobags to tick the center guard, but you know that might be hard for some, but she makes it look easy.
Zhang Xindi hasn't made many mistakes either this game. But everything she's done has been unraveled by mall bags. Either if it's a center guard that's been ticked or a perfect draw that's been frozen onto or tapped. She's just constantly been followed by the Swedish lead, like her shadow. Have you ever played a game, uh, Rona, where you just feel like you can't get a miss from your opponent? Yeah, it gets frustrating. When, you know, you do all you can and it gets frustrating when you don't get that chance. But uh, they just have to keep persevering, keep plugging away and hope for that one tiny glitch from Sweden. Well, but <laughs> there, <laughs> Sofia Marberg does it again. And this is the kind of play we've usually seen, typically uh, a last end, where teams just trying to score their one for the win. The teams are becoming so good at that type of shot, the tick, the soft peel, the split, whatever you like to call it. You see teams utilize that even in a first end. But even in practice situations when you know China are practicing, they have to play against 100% perfection. So coaches will set up ends and basically the shots against them would be 100% played because that's what you've got to manage yourself to play against. So although it gets frustrating when your opposition keep making the shots, that's curling and you've got to expect that your opposition are gonna make the shots. Such a mental thing, though. If you expect your opponent to make all the shots, it's a lot easier to cope with. If you're hoping for mistakes from your opponent, you'll be disappointed time and time again, and Absolutely. you'll be just more frustrated. I think that's probably, if you play a team you consider weaker than yourself, you're waiting for a mistake, and sometimes that team will have a great day. And then you become very frustrated. And very, yes. It's important to uh, treat every team the same, yeah, expect every team to make their shots. And if they do make a mistake, you know, now you're happy. Well, absolutely. And it is a game of patience at times. When you do play 10 in games, it's having that patience and being able just to play your shots time and time again and just wait. If you get that chance, then you capitalize but you have to respect all opposition the same. I think that's why you see upsets and curling as well sometimes. You'll the, the weaker team will always expect the, the better team to make all the shots and they'll never be that devastated because they know it's coming. But you've got to look at what you can do to overturn those good shots and make them play harder shots. The degree of difficulty you leave your opposition is so important. And looking over Russia, Canada women, Russia 4 nothing up. Line 2, Darcy Robertson. Looking to hit and sit. Slight rolling, oh, going for the raise on her own. Catches the top red, and it's another steal. Canadian troubles continue this week. Still looking for their first win. Russia now 5 nothing up after four ends. China sitting two, in behind two corners. Sadly, they don't have the last stone. But even just forcing Sweden to a one here would be a small victory. As we see, McMahon is playing 94%, looking for the run back on her own yellow here. Maybe in roll in. And yes, that one's made.
Lang Yi Yoon struggling in today's game. But going for the hit and roll right across here. Doesn't worry. All teams here at this Curling World Cup really fighting to get a place the grand final in Beijing. The winners of this event in men's, women's and mixed doubles will all gain a place there. Prize money is also on offer every game. The winner receives $1,500. Look over China, Canada. The only men's game on. Canada lying shot in the forefoot. And Matt Dunstan. Looking to raise this yellow, split it, and the shooter in. What a great shot for three. Canada lead 4 2 after four. He's going to play the hit and roll I'm behind a corner, I believe. Last note from uh, the skipper saying, you want to be shot no matter what here. I'm assuming that if you roll too far, then it's a freebie draw for China around that half center guard and lie two. I'd rather make them chase this yellow. See if uh, they've given this one a chance. Not, not quite going to be able to roll. Could have been that. Could have been on that maybe a bit earlier. Swept it and gotten the roll the other way. It's a bit of a safe throw from uh, Hasborg. You know, you know, we say we're, we don't want to overroll it. We tend to do the opposite. Uh, the yeah. way Sweden play the send was really only, only to make sure they score. Yeah, absolutely. They're three up. They've got the hammer. The center's open for Anna Hasselberg's last stone. <laughs> Set that one back a bit, uh, Jiang Yi Lun. Will it curl enough to stick around? Oh, I'm not sure. It will roll. All the way out and not spin back. Big mistake from the Chinese skip. And now I wonder if the other red stone is open enough for Sweden to, to make a peel and maybe blank this end. Just needs to keep her eye on that other red though, that she doesn't catch this thin and roll over and jam on the other red. It's just rolled out. Could, it is possible. <laughs> you have to be a bit unlucky. To you do would so. have to be very unlucky. And the way Anna Hasselberg throws as well. You would hopefully spin off it if there was any contact. <laughs> Last stone of the fifth end. Sweden getting exactly what they're wanting here. A chance to blank the end. Catches the red. Will they jam on the side here, Rona? No, underneath. No, perfect. 
No problems, and the score remains the same. It's a 5-2 lead for Sweden through five ends of play, three ends to go. Blank end, okay. and the fifth takes us to number six. Sweden keeps that last on advantage. And I think we'll see more of the same from Sweden, just trying to keep this open. Just make sure they can score, especially now in the sixth end, as we have three ends left. It'd be great to score. You'll be four up on China. You can even give away a four and seven, and you'd be tied with Hammer having a pretty good chance of winning. I don't think Sweden have got any intention of giving up fours <laughs> when your lead is consistently playing ticks like that. Well, this tick was even better than the one in the previous end. It is fully open as the girls have a chuckle over something. Frustration for Zhang Chindi. Keep spinning up those center guards. They keep being ticked. Now, I do have a, a slight trick up my sleeve for that, I'd say. Take the guard off the center line. Yeah, well, just like that, really. Just change it up. If it's right in the center line, that's probably where Sofia is most used to ticking them. Just throw them slightly off center line. For one, it's not what she's most used to doing. And two, she's already played a few ticks on this ice in this game. Just put it in a different spot. Make it a touch harder. We might see slight overcurl this time. No, don't be silly. <laughs> well, that's, that's as close as... That's as close to a mess you're going to get from her today, I think. <laughs> does, does, does split it. Just leaves her shooter in a usable spot for China, so something to work with, but not much. Absolutely, it is something for China to work with now. It is that slight error that we talked about, that when you get that, you have to capitalize because you might not get another one. So they wanted this guard on top of the yellow. But it has come up as a more of a center line guard. Anna Hasselberg always very aware of all the stones round about her, the guards, the ones in the house, where can she hit this?
Yep, that's exactly where she wanted it. Sweden, they haven't won the Curling World uh, Cup, so they're not directly qualified for that grand final in Beijing, but if you accumulate enough points, you should be able to uh, get there, and you see Sweden in third place with 29 points. So if they pick up a, a good chunk here, it should be a good step in the right direction. But of course, winning the event secures a spot there. Yeah, and even if you're runner-up in the event, you get five points bonus. So you get your round-robin points for winning each game. Three if you win the game outright in eight ends. And then you can... It's only the top from each section who do qualify for the final of the event. And the winner gets ten and the runner-up gets five. So it's all still to play for for these countries. That's uh, what, double the money in the final as well. It is. <laughs> Great incentive for the players. Uh, well, that's, that's early May. It'll be pretty good to, to cash out a bit for the, the summer holidays. Rest up nice for next season. Of course, after the Curling World Cup, a series of World Championships will follow. Juniors, women's, men's, mixed doubles, seniors. The grand final in Beijing is pretty much the end of the season. Yeah, May is quite late normally, Carlos. Kind of April is the end of season for most, so it'll be an added bonus for players to qualify for Beijing and have that to go to in May. Especially when prize money is at stake for every game they play. So there you can see the prize money. You're winning a round robin game, $1,500. So that's 18,000 that's available per group. If you win the final of the event, you get 20,000. Lose the final, 10,000. So there's a lot of money at stake. Oh. So Sarah McMahon is trying to take the double guard there. Misses the back one and does leave a guard out front. So finally a chance for China to put a bit of pressure on Sweden here. Come around that guard finally. Now with uh, Jiang Yilun's first stone. Great chance now to come around, lie to. But this one is looking a light of weight. Just nestles on top of the yellow. A look over China, Canada, Canada 4 2 up. And they're lying three at the sixth end. Mashua having to draw. Against three Canadian counters. Come around the top two yellows into the forefoot. And they've lost it. Wow, a steal of two for Canada. Canada leads 6-2 after six ends. 
taking control of that game. Nice hit from Anna Hasselberg. It's a shooter in play, so China have to make a play on it and go for the roll. They can't roll directly behind the red and yellow guard because the plant would go straight back for Sweden if they made contact with that red stone. So they need to roll over a bit further so that they were half behind the, those guards and half behind the yellow. Just not enough of a roll. Anna Hasselberg just taking another look to see if that front one's in or not. From here, it looks as though it's out, but it must be pretty close. Because it makes a difference whether they blank here, try and split the red out and go for the blank or whether they hit in the nose if that front one was in. I suppose at the sixth end, there'd be no harm in Sweden. If they nose this and that front one's not in, they still score one. So they're 6-2 up with two ends to go. They would hate to peel the shot out and then that yellow was in and they've missed an opportunity for two. So all the team members have now had a look. The consensus is it's out. So just going to peel this one out. Uh, worst, worst case, you roll out. You score one. Yeah, four up with two ends to play. It's not a bad position to be in. <laughs> so Hasselborg will make the peel here, looking pretty good. We'll see if China wants to measure. Put the six foot measure on this. Blank. <laughs> Blank, McManus asks. Okay. No, China are saying we're going to measure that. I think it's probably worth a measure. So that's the six foot measure. And if the end touches the rock here, it is in and it's a one point for Sweden. If not, that is a, another blank. Either way, Sweden will be pretty happy. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's out. How close was that? So Sweden made the right call. A keen eye. And still playing very well. Sweden, 5-2 lead after six.
Five two still the score. As Sweden play China. Session twelve, women's curling, curling World Cup here in Yonchoping, Sweden. And we see China putting the guard off the centre line this time. Yeah, well, they're, they're allowed to talk to the coaches between the ends. Maybe a tip from perhaps a Mike Harris or a Carolyn McCrory. Yeah, well, both of them are Olympic silver medalists, so they can pass on good advice to the team. Didn't seem to help one bit, though. Sophia Mormags makes the tick again. Unbelievable. Yep, she's like, well, wherever you put that, China, I'm going to tick it. And it is just that repetitive practice of these tick shots that yeah. gives her the confidence. No shots too difficult for her. Both leads having a great game today when you see the comparisons. Yeah, well, Zhang Shindi has just been throwing the centre guards up there. Well, Marburg's been just ticking them off their centre line time and time again. So even if she's played a brilliant game, her stone haven't her stones haven't been that effective. Because look at this again. She takes it open. Oh maybe no it touches the side. Oh does it? No, it doesn't. It did look as though it touched the foam. It did touch, yes. Wow. Yeah. Sport. No. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, you hear Agnes Nockenhauer, <laughs> very sportsmanlike. Very. China weren't even going to put that back. Jang Yilin was sweep, like sweeping that. Didn't think it touched. Yeah, I think it. Was going to yeah, keep on playing. Yeah. Agnes Nockenhauer says no. I saw it touch. Put it back. Very sportsmanlike. So the first slight error we've seen from Sofia Marbergs today. Seemed like a very uh, deflated attempt at sweeping that one out though by Zhang Yilun. Almost like she was ex just expecting Sofia to make it. <laughs> like uh, there wasn't much point in attempting. But that zone is then replaced, a uh, violation of the free guard zone. And finally China able to have a couple of guards along the center line here as they look to steal a few points. Big difference in the stats for the second players. So we've, we saw both leads having a great game, but second player certainly what's making the difference today. Constant feedback from Anna Hasselberg to her players as well about how they threw the stone. Always wanting to improve. Oh dear. Opportunity lost for China. Hogging the stone. Dong Suji, troubles continue today. Yeah. 
här laget för att hon är som hon här ser ut som Lauren och hon är mörk hår ser ut som Dons. Dons. När de skippar dem alltså här. So all China can do is keep putting up these guards. Just hope for a slight error from Sweden and they're peeling. McManus enjoying a very good game at 92%. Just overall, Swedes today been on fire. And uh, yes, China's made some mistakes. But they've been penalized very hard every time they've had a half shot or two. Been an uphill struggle. But what's important for this young Chinese team is that they are developing, you know, they're getting the opportunity to play the Olympic champion. And with their coaches, they will make sure they learn from every game they play out here. work out how they can get better and better. And there we have a final score. Russia beat Canada seven to nothing. Canada's woes for Darcy Robertson continue. Still looking for their first win at this Curling World Cup. But Russia progress and they will be fighting out the section with Sweden. So if Anna Hasselberg concludes a win here, the next game against Russia will be the key one in this section. So Sweden are in Group E. They only have one game left in their double round robin. And that will determine the winner of this group. So it's all very exciting down to the last game. So the winner of Russia, Sweden and the next one will be in the final, is that what you say? So Russia currently, after that win, they will be in 11 points. If Sweden win this game just now, they will be in 12 points. So it will go down to the last game. Canada, as we've seen, are on zero points and China are currently sitting on seven. So yet again, another uh, clinical end from Sweden. They're so strong when they're up in a game, keeping things clean, keeping it simple. Good job, good job, good job. Good job, good job. 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 Good job
Thingy Loon just trying to use the only stone in play as cover. <laughs> Made a very good attempt. Sweden can't see the whole stone. Can see half of it. So can see enough to peel it out. Very good attempt there though to bury behind the corner. So nice to see smiles from the Chinese girls. The second thought here from Hasselberg thinking. <laughs> wanting to draw instead. I say, well, you don't have to. You don't have to really move the broom. Keep it in the same spot, but wanting to throw the out turn instead. So the thinking here for Anna is. Playing the peel is really the only risk in her mind to give up the steal, crash on the guard. The draw is pretty routine, barely in a piece of the eight foot. And to be one up, or rather four up before the eighth end, is probably just as comfortable as being three up with, uh, with, that, uh, with the hammer. Because they would then get to throw first at the eighth end and dictate play from the start. So the draw is played and the draw is made right on the button. Almost no sweeping required. Just cleaning that one in will be one for Sweden. Up four, one end to go here. And you're in shopping. <laughs> One end to go as China plays Sweden on sheet A. 6-2 lead for Sweden. Haven't made many mistakes. China will have to further, well, they're going to have to make eight shots here and get a few rare mistakes from the Swedes to have any chance of picking up four. The only upside here is there's no extra end, so you don't have to steal. If you do score a four, push the game into a shootout. And it's just about drawing the pin. And that way they, they split the points. Two for the winner, one for the loser. Of course, Sweden quite like all three points. So they'll try and win it right here. Make sure China can't score that many. And the first person up to to stop China from doing so is Sofia Maubanks. She's ticked a lot of center guards today. This will be the first attempt at a corner tick, which is pretty tough. We see this in mixed doubles play quite a lot. Not so much in the men's and women's. It's not a bad result. Yes, they leave a corner guard. Yes, they've tapped their stone back a tee. 
But that redstone is now in the house and they can peel it on the next one. And China's <laughs> thinking well, are we throwing oh, another corner? Or should we throw a center guard on this oh. red to protect it? Not often you throw a center guard early on with last stone, but... I'm needing a four. <laughs> <laughs> well, desperate times, calls for desperate measures. Clutching at straws. You'll try anything. So as we talked about Russia winning their game on Canada, picking up three points. Sweden looking good to do the same, which shapes up the, the group and the way that we'll probably have or most likely have a group final between Russia and Sweden and the winner would go to uh, the, the final tomorrow. It would be dependent as well if it went to a shootout and Sweden got two points. They would be level, and then it would go in the head-to-head. -head. So it could all be very exciting. Russia beat Sweden in the first part of the double round robin. Oh, look at this call here. Nockenhauer going to slash their own corner onto the redstone in the house. What a shot. Wow. That's the way you kill the five rock rule. Absolutely. And now China have put up their centre guard, which <laughs> they don't really want. That's incredible. China thinking, well, we're going to protect that red stone. Plays a perfect centre guard. And Sweden says, well, we'll just angled run in our corner guard. China would have been as well putting a long guard up on that yellow and have two corner guards at the same side. Either way you play it, you need a couple of mistakes to be able to score a four. And they probably wanted that guard a little deeper. Does leave a slash double for Nockenhauer. Surely she can't make the angled run and a slash double on these guards as well. So almost asking too much. Oh, but pretty good. <laughs> so close to being absolutely perfect. I don't think it's in. Look how clean this looks. So different from uh, a lot of the eighth ends we've seen where teams have been up three and four and they've been sucked into playing with lots of stones. And it's not like China's made too many mistakes China here. has done nothing wrong at this end. <laughs> Just Sweden have completely outplayed them. And Anna. Anna Hasselberg so good at reading where to hit the stones, the angles. She knows exactly. And the players just do it. I uh, thought they were coming around the corner here, China. So, And there's handshake. Korea winners over USA 7-2. to two. So the finalists from the Omaha second leg. Still on target to get to another final. And hopefully win it to get to Beijing. Slight mistake from McManus. Hasselberg saying it was a good throw. So maybe just catching a little bit of curl on the wide wing. How do you score four, though? With Convin great difficulty. <laughs> convince your opponent you're actually playing ten ends. <laughs> Go next door, pick up a, a couple more red stones. Hope there's a power cut and Sweden can't see what they're playing. <laughs> 
They're definitely trying their best, and this is a good draw. Okay. And around. A great draw around. And to say it is still, it's all a learning curve for this young team. So even playing this last end four down, they're learning from it. The debrief with the coaches will go over situations and look to see what they might do differently. Where stone placement should be. I think we said it a few whoa, times that whoa. China hasn't Nine. necessarily done much Nine. wrong. Nine. Yes, they've had their Nine. 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 mistakes and misses, but Nine. not many Nine. teams would have beaten Sweden like they're playing Nine. this morning. China only have two more stones after this one, and they need them all to count. So look over Scotland, Japan. Great draw at the button from Sophie Jackson. Floor slide, more positive. Lines high. Sets up. Lines high. A chance for two at this seventh end. Oh, oh, yes. Lines good. Oh, trying to hold the line here. And needing it for weight. Is she passed? She's not missed opportunity. Just a one there for Scotland. So they lead 4 3 going into the eighth end. Open hit here for Anna Hasselborg. That would uh, run Ch China out of stones. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is having a, a second look. No, there's only two left for China. No way to score a four. Very professional performance by Sweden this morning. Three points for them. And a little bit of cash as well as they take one huge leap towards the uh, final tomorrow. But they'll still have to play Russia. So the only game remaining, whoa, whoa. women's game between yeah. Scotland and Japan, eighth hard, end. Hard, hard. Hard. Good. Nice raise takeout from Naomi Brown. Japan have got last stone, they need to score two to win. Or score one to take it to a shootout. Both these teams only have one more game left, so Scotland mathematically can't qualify for tomorrow's final. Japan can, nope, so they're looking for a win here. 
A oh, great double takeout. Scotland lie one, Japan lie second and third. Lily, do you like the guard or throwing the double? Okay. So a bit of debate as to whether they wanted just to guard or take the double in the yellows. Just need to be careful they don't jam the yellow on the left hand red at the bottom of the screen. So Sophie Jackson skipped for Team Scotland. Yep. First yeah. appearance at Curling World Cup. Oh, oh, oh. Looking for the double on the no. yellows. Yep. And that's exactly what she's done, is jam that yellow on the wing. Naomi Brown didn't even look at that. So a chance now for Japan. Tori Koana. To lie to. Yes! 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 Sweepers on this very early. Can they hold it? They did perfectly. So Japan lie too. Is there a thin double for Sophie Jackson? If not, make sure we won't land in front of it. Well, it's quite thin. Pretty thin. So this is a shot that's going to make sure Japan can't score two. Would you ever consider drawing around the stone as well? Maybe back four? You could win the game that way. You could. Yes. This is a very thin double. Hard. Hard. Sounds pretty close. A little bit of disagreement on the line call here. Yeah. Will it grab enough curl? Thinly it onto does. the second one. What a great double. Wow. Fantastic play by Sophie Jackson. She stays calm and cool as Scotland now lies to Japan. We'll have to draw for one to tie this game. And what happens next then? And then we'll get a shootout. Catch that really thin, perfect double. After the jam with our first, certainly made up for it there. So, Tori Koana with a reverse handle. Nobody oh. does it like her. A little bit of panic early, but yes. looks, looks okay. Just needs to be fully in the eight foot. Uh, looks pretty good here. You know, all other games finished, everyone watching. She just draws the lid. And that could be valuable now Absolutely. as we head into the shootout. She knows the pathway to the button. She knows the ice. She knows the weight. That was her dry run. <laughs> same, same, same. Exactly. As Japan will go first as well. This is Scotland's second shootout. They had one yesterday. And they managed to win that one. So 
So with the shootout, the winner gets two points, the loser gets one point, but they split the money. So the $1,500 prize money for this game will be split between Japan and Scotland, regardless of who wins the shootout. So same draw, same everything here. Did undercurl slightly. Uh, the sweepers the jumped in the last one though, remember, they're yep. a lot calmer this time. Oh, well, it might mean it's mm -hmm. running a bit hot. And it will. Wow. I had the chance to just play the same shot again, but added a bit too much on this try. It's just maybe fully eight foot or less. And Sophie Jackson will have lots of room here. Oh, maybe not Sophie Jackson to throw the draw. Sophie Sinclair, so she is lead player. She's been playing draws all day. She's obviously quite confident. She knows her draw weight. Line's good. So it's all up to Naomi Brown and Lines Millie good. Smith. Have a look. Line's good. Looking pretty good. Hard. Clean, 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 clean. Very much in control here. Great throw. And some light Whistle. brushing brings it right on the button just for show. So Scotland gets two points. Japan one, and the money is split accordingly. And that wraps up this session this morning here in Jönköping, Sweden. So definitely getting to the business end of the, the event. All finals to be played tomorrow. Here's the scoreline for our future game this morning. It was China playing Sweden. Sweden coming out on top. 6-2 win. I'll have a few highlights from that game. So the fourth end. China facing three Swedish counters. <laughs> Zhang Yilun trying to draw fully eight foot, rubs the top one and just sneaks in for shot. Seventh end, a good draw around the corner guard by China. Anna Hasselberg decides we'll just draw for one. And puts it right on the button. And eighth end, Sweden four up. Anna Hasselberg just needs to remove one of these red stones. Makes it perfectly and it's all over. Sweden run out 6-2 winners over China. Elsewhere this morning, we had uh, Scotland beating Japan 5 to 4, Russia beating Canada 7 to nothing, while Korea beating USA 7 to 2. And then the only men's game out there was Canada picking up a win on China. So the standings in uh, the women's competition it is Sweden on top alongside Russia in Group A, while Korea, well, they're through. To the final, while USA, Japan, and Scotland follow there. So, starting to shape up. And these are the points. As we say, 3 2 or 1 point awarded through the games, but if you make it to that final and win, you get 10. If you come up 
runner-up, you get five extra points and maybe enough to clinch a spot at the grand final in Beijing. Here's Anna Hasselberg. Stunning uh, performance by Sweden today. What kind of work goes into performing so well? We said uh, yesterday that all the players had have like uh, a couple of games uh, that were really good, but we haven't had them in the same time. So uh, this game we really focus on having a good game, like all the players. And when we do that, uh, it's easy to play. So what's nice for me today. <laughs> Lovely display of sportsmanship by your second Agnes on that free guard zone violation. What can you say about that? Uh, no, it's, it's that's the thing with curling. Like uh, we are, we don't have any referees out there, and you, uh, it's a, it's a really like a sportsmanship sport. So I think uh, we should keep it that way, and I think it's karma too. I think we, if you do good things, I think good things will come back. You play Russia now, group final. Uh, how do you prepare for that game? We love being in those games. If we win, we're in. If we lose, we're out. So that's uh, all we ask for. Yeah, really looking forward to that. Tack så mycket. Tack. <laughs> so at the end of uh, the morning session, but there's more to come here from Jönköping, Sweden and the Curling World Cup. Stay tuned for more fun and more action. <laughs>